A Raspberry Pi tablet. This is the Raspad 3.0, literally a touchscreen with a Raspberry Pi inside of it. Sounds pretty useful, but is it? I'm gonna answer that question in this video. Press start. What's up, smart homers? This is Aaron. In this video, I'm gonna show you the Raspad 3.0. I'm gonna show you how to assemble it, how it works and some of its features, and if it's even a good idea in the first place. Full disclosure, the seller did send me this product for a review. Initially, I was gonna turn them down, but after reading some of the documentation about some of the features and use cases for it, it may be just the piece of tech that I need to solve a problem that I have. I'm gonna get into that at the end of this video. As always, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I feel about this device, despite having been sent it for free. So let's look at the design. The Raspad 3 supports a Raspberry Pi 4, but it does not come with one. So you're gonna to need to pick one of those up as well. The unique wedge shaped design of this device is not just for looks. It's necessary in order to make space behind the screen for the Raspberry Pi and allow for efficient cooling. The wedge shape also allows for the tablet to stand up on its end as well as lay down on its back, giving you two different extreme angles for it to rest. I found that the angle that it rests on while it's lying on its back is just a little bit too shallow for me to look at while I'm sitting at my computer desk. Obviously I could just raise my chair up a little bit higher and I could see it better. For external ports, the Raspad has an ethernet port, three USB-A ports, an HDMI port, a headphone jack, and a DC power jack. On the opposite side of the tablet, it has battery and power indicators, a power button, volume and brightness controls, and a micro SD card slot. On the back are some holes to allow for sound from the internal speakers to escape, and also to allow airflow through the case. There's also a slot for a Raspberry Pi camera's ribbon cable to fit through. If you're wondering about GPIO access, there is a slot in the top edge that allows for the use of a ribbon cable to bring the GPIO pin access outside of the tablet body. Obviously the main feature of this device is the display. And in my opinion, it's really nothing to write home about. It has a 1280 by 800 resolution and with a physical size of 10.1 inches, it looks pretty good, but nothing special. The touch interface is pretty nice with no false touches or mistouches in my experience. The assembly of this device is pretty straightforward. You'll need to bring your own Pi and then follow the assembly instructions found on the Raspad website. When you open up, you'll see a motherboard inside as well as a button board which has all of the external buttons on it. There's also a bunch of mounting holes for the Raspberry Pi. The SD card cable which comes with the tablet needs to be attached to the Pi and then attached to the button board. Then the Pi can be screwed into place and the Ethernet, USB-A, micro USB, and USB-C cables can be connected. After that, there's a little accelerometer that can be slid onto the Pi's GPIO pins. I never needed to solder these, I just slid them into place and they stayed and I didn't have any issues with the accelerometer. This accelerometer is necessary for the auto-rotate function that you set up later. After all the cables and the accelerometer are installed, the fan can be mounted to the back of the case and then plugged into the appropriate spot on the motherboard. Before closing it up, don't forget to add the heat sinks to the Raspberry Pi to make sure it's getting cooled properly. After assembly, you'll need to use the Raspberry Pi OS installer to install the Raspberry Pi OS on the SD card. These instructions are all given on the Raspad website. The tablet functions pretty much as you'd expect a Raspberry Pi to function. After assembly, you can follow the instructions on the Raspad website in order to install an on-screen keyboard, the auto-rotate function, and a right-click function. The on-screen keyboard works pretty well, but it doesn't have any of the swipe features that you would be used to with an Android tablet, of course. It worked pretty well with occasional missed touches on the spacebar, but the main issue being that the keyboard does not auto display when you click to edit text in any text field. It's only showing up in some of them, and that's a big problem. They're gonna to need to work on that. 
The auto rotate function works pretty well in my opinion, allowing you to view the display upside down, right side up in both portrait and landscape modes. There is a brief black screen when you rotate it, but nothing that really would stop you from being able to use the tablet at all. The right click feature is a little gimmicky. It's supposed to display a menu when you long press, say for example, the desktop. However, if the touch surface is too big, like if you're using your thumb, then it could not register the right click. I really don't find this feature very useful, but some people might. The display works pretty well, but it doesn't get as bright as some of my other Android and Windows tablets. It's good enough for the dark of my office where I'm gonna be using this most of the time, but out in the sunlight, it gets a little bit harder to see. That also could be because of the viewing angle. The tablet runs pretty quiet, but you do hear the cooling fan sometimes, which you obviously don't in a standard Android tablet. So what do I plan to use this for? My plan is to install Octoprint on the Raspberry Pi and then use that to remotely monitor and control my Ender 3 3D printer. I've actually already done this, but this will probably be something for a future video. On top of Octoprint, Octodash can also be installed, which is used to display a nice graphical user interface on top of Octoprint. After installing Octodash, the touchscreen automatically works with this Raspad and I can use the touch interface to control my 3D printer. In my opinion, the biggest consideration you're gonna to need to make when you're looking at this device is the price. I really don't think the price of this unit, $220 US, is really worth it if you're only planning to use this as a smart home dashboard. If you're looking for a tablet that you, you wanna to use to display Home Assistant on, I recommend you check out one of my other videos where I showed how you can use a Fire Tablet HD to do that. That is 10 times better than this. I also wouldn't recommend you run Home Assistant directly on the Pi inside of this, although there is a guide on how to do this on the Raspad website. It just doesn't seem like it's really worth it. Just run on a Pi without this. You really don't need a display for a device that's running Home Assistant. Where I think this device really shines is for DIY uses like Octoprint and GPIO programming. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys in this video. What do you guys think of the Raspad? Any other ideas for using it? Let me know in the comments. I put a link for this product in the description and I also put a link to my website if you're interested in looking at all the other products that I use in my smart home. I have some pretty cool videos coming up so if you're interested please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. See ya.